Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to fill a viewer request for Coca Cola, ticker symbol KO. Now, I've never really looked into Coca Cola that much, but I'm sure it's a pretty fundamentally sound business, and I say that because they have a global presence. They have that the they have a large moat. They have a competitive advantage over their peers. So it's going to be very interesting to see what these financials hold, but nonetheless, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in KO. I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose, simply stating my opinion. I probably own it in my index fund, so that is a sole tie. So going into the financials, a little disconnect from the PE, a little disconnect in profit, a little disconnect in free cash flow. Uh, price to sales, definitely a little bit high. Going to have to pay a premium for this type of company. Competitive advantage, large moat. Uh, you're going to have to pay a premium for those types of companies. But matching the price of sales up to these uh, gross margins and profit margins, uh, I'd want to see these profit margins definitely higher for this type of price of sales. But that doesn't mean that's going to be bad or overvalued. That's uh, simply just the way that's set up right now. Who, who knows? But uh, Return on asset, uh, pretty solid. Return on equity, extremely good, 41%. This is shareholder value, the money that they get from shareholders, issuance of shares, buyback of shares. Uh, very solid value. Coke, I, I would probably say Coke has been buying back a ton of shares uh, through this time, through this time period. But is is this a good time for them to be buying back shares? I don't know if I want to see them buying back shares up here, especially with a large price of sales. That's kind of an indicator to me that it, it is probably a little bit on the higher side. But you got to think, high inflationary times, the companies with a competitive advantage, that pricing power are probably going to prosper in times like this. And the stock price is held up pretty good. You're sitting back collecting a dividend. Now this dividend, $7.5 in dividends paid. Matching that up with the free cash flow year to date, that's around that 70%. And the five year average, that's around that 90 over 90% payout ratio. So uh, we're gonna have to definitely check in on the dividends, uh, see if it's growing and see if they're buying back shares where they, if they're buying back shares, you have less shares to pay out a dividend to. Um, so that could lower the amount of dividends paid. Um, so a few things that we need to look into off of first glance, but let's take a look at the eight pillars. Oh man, I, I was not expecting to see that they were issuing shares. That we're definitely gonna have to go look at the shares and see if that trend is sort of changing, or if or if they're starting to dilute shares even more, possibly. I mean, stock price has been holding up here pretty consistently since April. Um, yeah, I'd want to see. I would want to see the shares for sure. We're gonna touch base on the debt now. Matter of valuation with these with the with this eighth check mark and the first check mark matter of valuation but that doesn't mean that it's overvalued um, so we are gonna touch base on a few things let's start with the shares outstanding actually let's go revenue so a huge increase in revenue right here pretty consistent now I can see they were actually decreasing consistently let's go look at the previous year so now we're in 2012 right here oh wow man guys you could have FOMO'd into this look at this growth Boom, 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 boom. You could have said, oh, man, look at this growth. Let's FOMO into this. How much, in the year 2012, how much did Coca-Cola have to grow? Like, how much more could they possibly grow and sustain this revenue growth? You see how easy it would have been to FOMO into this? Guys, look at that. And would they, what did they follow this up with? Decrease, 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 decrease. Okay, they held flat. Okay, now we're starting to get that increase again. Uh, like I said, as you are, when you're in every single global market, you're going to have to be doing stuff with acquisitions, selling off brands. Now, Coca-Cola, they, I'm sure they have tons and tons of brands. I'd want to see them selling off parts of their of their business to bring in that extra cash, and then I'd want to see them making acquisitions that are going to get better value for. So they're selling off brands that they've got value from over the course of a long period of time, and they're selling them to a competitor to get cash for it. And then they take that cash, and then they maybe make an acquisition in a department that is going to prosper more. That is what I want to see with Coca-Cola, but we haven't got to the acquisitions yet. Cost of goods sold. So high inflationary times, guys. Look at, look at the cost of goods sold right here. 
You see this increase in cost of goods sold? Now look at the revenue with it, increasing right along with it. But matching that up with gross profit, the gross profit is still increasing. This is what I was talking about with the pricing power. When they have that pricing power, competitive advantage over their peers, they are still actually increasing their gross profit. So that is not as much of a, of a red flag, but you can still see this decline over the last 10 years. That, that's very interesting. So let's go look at the shares outstanding. Oh, yes, issuing shares. Over the last five years, they, they are not moving this trend. They have been issuing shares. And look at, look at the years before that. When they were decreasing as a business, they were diluting shares. Or they were buying back shares because they are they are looking at their shareholders and they're saying, okay, we got to make sure that our shareholders are fine. So them buying back shares in those times is kind of looking out for the shareholders. Let's go back to the revenue. You can see the revenue consistently decreasing. Okay, now in these years, they're actually diluting shares. L look at the stock price. They've been diluting shares through this whole time period right here. Company invests their money very well. Let's go back and look at the equity. 40% return on equity. This is the value that they get from shareholder money, issuance of shares, buyback of shares. I'm sure there's probably more in there, but I know those three things calculate into return on equity. They do a very good job of it, guys. Is this growth going to be sustainable? How much more can do they have to grow? I see a couple specialty income charges right here. I'm sure this is acquisition related. <clears throat> Dividends is increasing. So they're issuing shares and increasing a dividend. So going back to the metrics tab, dividends paid. This amount of dividends paid is going to continue increasing. This immediately strikes a red flag with, with the free cash flow. We're definitely gonna have to go look at free cash flow next. And, and check that out. But first, before we do that, let's switch into a quarterly. Every column now represents a quarter. And I can still I can still see they're, they're consistently diluting shares here, guys. Consistently. So that, that is something to be to monitor for sure, especially with the price of Coca-Cola being where it's at. It's held up pretty well. Price of Coca-Cola is held up pretty well. It's actually setting a lower high right here. And, yeah, is that growth going to be sustainable? That is a very good question. Let's go to the cash flow statement. Net income. So, yeah, large spike in net income. Large spike in net income. I mean, not too, not too bad. Uh, cash from operations, they're doing pretty well. Free cash flow. Oh, yeah, guys, look at this. Huge spike in free cash flow. Huge spike in free cash flow. Now, look at the, the acquisition. Oh, here we go, guys. Acquisitions. This is, this is very important right here. Selling off department, this they sold off brands or some sort of their business and got $1.83 billion. Now look at the other acquisitions. That they, oh, I've seen they sold off another department here in 2017. So out of, uh, I do not know for sure, but if I had to guess, if I had to assume, they got solid value out of these brands that they sold over the course of the entire history of Coca-Cola. We go back to the metrics tab. Let's turn this on max. I'm sure they got very solid value out of those brands, and now they're selling those brands to get cash. And they're using that cash to make other acquisitions. So I'm sure in their minds, these were struggling departments. That, that weren't as profitable for them, they're selling those off and now they're making acquisitions in departments where, okay, maybe there is value here. So a lot of acquisitions that you're gonna have to look into and also uh, the um, selling of their departments. So you gotta go look into those for sure. Who? what else we got? A payment of debt, issuance of capital stocks, so they're issuing shares and buying back shares. <clears throat> So they're doing both. That's where you see that high return on equity. They do a very good job of it. These these guys definitely know what they're doing with their shares. 100%. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at in terms of financials is the debt metrics. So I see a little bit higher on the debt, but is, is Coca-Cola going anywhere? Guys, let's be honest. Is Coca-Cola going anywhere? Total assets, 93 93 billion. I want to see total liabilities less than that. Okay, so they got a current ratio of around that 1.4, 1.38, if I had to guess. I don't know. 
Uh, total long-term liabilities, $47 billion. Their five-year average free cash flow, even though with the two pretty high increases from 2020, boom, boom. Uh, five-year average free cash flow, $8 billion. So, yeah, it, it, it take about six years for them to pay to pay off that long-term liabilities. But like I said, I don't think Coke's going anywhere. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff in the financials. I'd say, nonetheless, it's, it's still a pretty fundamentally sound business. I'm going to be very interested to see. Oh, yeah, that return on invested capital. We didn't look at that very much. Um, so, yeah, they do invest their money very well. Uh, right around that five-year average. Let's go and check up on that. So KO. <clears throat> Return on invest capital. Yeah, they do a very good job now. A very bad year in 2017. Uh, but right back on track. Yeah, I'm not worried about the, their ability to invest their capital, especially when their that return on equity is like that. And let's look at the revenue real quick. KO. Coca. Cola. Hmm. Yeah, we'll skip that part. Yeah, we're sitting at around 11 minutes. We're probably going to wrap this video up. In the next video, you can expect me to make a, value, a uh, video on the valuation for Coca-Cola. I'm not sure what numbers I'm going to plug in. I'm not sure what numbers I'm going to see. And then we will wrap up the Coca-Cola series with the charting video after the valuation video. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. I, I hope you guys enjoy the content and we will see you on the next one.